Okay, I have two items for all of you at the top. Uh, during a phone call with Foreign Minister Lavrov yesterday afternoon, Secretary Kerry expressed concern with the delay and the ongoing efforts to remove the remaining 8 percent of declared chemical weapons material from Syria, as well as the recent detainment of OPCW inspectors. Secretary Kerry also raised concerns about reports of foreign fighters crossing the border from Russia into Ukraine, particularly reports of Chechen fighters. He pressed Foreign Minister Lavrov to end all support for separatists, denounce their actions, and call on them to lay down their arms. He also urged Russia to reach out to President-elect Poroshenko and begin working together to de-escalate the conflict. Uh, an, an additional item at the top, uh, we strongly condemn the murder of a woman outside the Lahore High Court on Tuesday. We welcome comments by senior Pakistani leaders condemning this heinous crime and calling for it to be dealt with promptly. We hope the perpetrators are quickly brought to justice in accordance with Pakistan's law. Tragically, this was at least the third reported so-called honor killing in Pakistan this week. We remain very concerned about violence against women and girls that takes place around the world, including in Pakistan. We are especially concerned about the violence that occurs in the name of tradition and honor, such as so-called honor killings and other unjustifiable acts of violence. We have been encouraged by Pakistan's passage of leg legislation protecting women's rights, and we encourage the full implementation of such laws, as well as greater public awareness uh, about these laws, especially in Pakistan's rural and tribal areas. With that, Matt, go ahead. Thanks. Um, before we get back to Ukraine, which I'm sure we will, and maybe even Syria too, I wanted to just uh, ask you a couple things about the Secretary's comments yesterday, rather strong comments yesterday about Edward Snowden mm -hmm. in some interviews that he did. Um, he called him a traitor, said he should man up, a, a traitor, a coward, said he should man up and come home to face justice. Um, how does the Secretary make the determination that Mr. Snowden is a traitor? I think what the Secretary, I, I don't think I have anything to add to the Secretary's comments. Uh, he was making clear what uh, the administration feels, which is that uh, when you release uh, classified information, when you put people at risk, uh, that is not something that's in line with a patriot of the United States of America. He did. He he mentioned the word patriot, and in the same sentence as patriot, he mentioned the name of Daniel Ellsberg. I'm wondering, does the secretary believe that Dan Ellsberg was a patriot, or is is a patriot, and that Edward Snowden is a traitor? Is that I'm correct? not going to do any more analysis of the secretary's comments. I think he was pretty clear in how he feels about. Uh, the uh, alleged actions uh, by Edward Snowden. He thinks he should be returned and face justice in the United States. Is, is he convinced that he'll be convicted? There were a lot of, the reason I'm asking this is because back in the, <clears throat> during the whole Pentagon Papers, there were a lot of people that felt the same way the Secretary feels about Ed Snowden, who uh, they felt the same way about, about Dan, Els well, Dan Ellsberg. I'd yeah. note too, Matt, that the he, Secretary himself was, uh, when he was opposing the war in Vietnam, was right. Uh, targeted and criticized and followed, and uh, he believes there are other means for uh, for raising flags about issues where you have concerns. Right, but Daniel Ellsberg admitted to breaking the law, and yet the secretary believes he's a patriot. And Ed Snowden, Edward Snowden, also admitted to breaking the law, and he is a traitor. That's the, I'm having a problem understanding. I mean, I'll ask him the next time I have the opportunity to, but do, have you, do you have any idea what his thinking is about this? I encourage you to. I think the point he was okay. making, I Matt, mean, is about his concern and distaste for the actions of Edward Snowden. Right. I, I understand that. But the, the only difference at the moment that seems to be, well, I mean, other than the, what they actually leaked, uh, is that Ellsberg was charged and went on trial, but he, he was never acquitted he was never convicted. The case, you'll recall, was thrown out by a judge because of such severe prosecu prosecutorial misconduct um, that he that the judge said it was indelibly tainted. He could, he could never get a fair trial, which is exactly what Snowden fears now. So well, we I just can assure Mr. Snowden that if he returns to the United States, he will receive a fair trial and. I don't think the secretary was meaning to compare every component. Okay. He was making a broad comparison. But can I just, just say, but is your mm -hmm. understanding that the secretary believes that Daniel Ellsberg is a patriot? Is that I would stand correct? by what the secretary said yesterday. But I, okay, and it's not just because Daniel Ellsberg on Vietnam held the same opinion 
as the secretary did at the same time? Certainly not. Certainly not. It's not. Okay. So then the difference would be that one went to trial even though the case was thrown out of court and the other one hasn't? I don't think there's a, a real benefit in doing much okay. more analysis of the comparison. Ms. Right. Nolan himself said in the interview last night that he believes he he's still working for the government, that he is a patriot because after the release of the um, information that he gave out, um, all three branches of the U.S. administration um, made reforms. And so his contention is that it was something that had to be brought to the public's attention, that there, his words was massive constitutional abuses going on. And what he did was a patriot thing to do. He says, you can't, you, um, to do the right thing, you sometimes have to break the law. And he compared his actions to the civil disobedience um, movement. I mean, why, why, why are his actions any different to what happened in, in other stages of American history where people took into their hands what they felt was the right thing to do? Well, I, I don't know that there's much more I can add or should add to what the Secretary uh, said yesterday, and he addressed this extensively in several interviews uh, and made clear that our view is that he's not a patriot and he should uh, stay in the United States or return to the United States to make his case, and but we encourage him to do so. correct that he uh, exposed weaknesses in um, uh, in what was going on in the United States and that what he exposed were constitutional abuses in which, in fact, a, a court actually said what had been happening was unconstitutional. Well, Is that not correct? The president himself has addressed this. He's given a speech, uh, ex uh, several speeches. He's, we've, there have been reforms made. Uh, and the secretary believes that would have been a discussion we would have had regardless. Okay, so Snowden also said that he um, he doesn't believe that he would get a fair trial because he's been uh, charged with very heavy espionage charges and um, that he would not actually be able to use evidence against him because it would be classified in, in his defense. I would refer you to the Department of Justice on how uh, the mechanics of, of any trial would work. Uh, that's certainly not under our purview, but I can assure you uh, that he would receive a fair trial, and uh, we believe the next step is for him to return to the United States. Aren't there any negotiations going on between this building or the DOJ and Mr. Sloan and his legal team to cut a deal under which he could come back to the United States? I'd refer you to the Department of what Justice. About they have to leave. extradite him. The Department of Justice has the lead. I don't. We don't have anything to add from here. So he said he'd also be willing to extend his asylum, which I believe runs out on the 1st of August. Are you in touch with um, your counterparts in Russia on this issue? Well, you know how we feel about his return. They know how we feel. Uh, I don't have anything further to add to it. Quick follow-up to Matt, real quick. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, um, and then we'll go to Catherine. Okay, go ahead, um, Lucas. The Secretary's remarks suggest that he believes there are some sets of classified documents that can be leaked to the news media, which would make an individual a traitor, and there are other sets of classified information leaked to the news that would make an individual a patriot. I know you covered this, but is this I'm the not Secretary's sure it view? suggests that. I'm going to leave the Secretary's statements as, as he made them yesterday. Go ahead, Catherine. Uh, following up on Joe's last question there, um, just to clarify, did Edward Snowden come up in the Secretary's phone call with Foreign Minister Lavrov this morning? No, he did not. Um, did the secretary watch the interview last night on NBC? Not that I'm aware of, no. Does he have plans to watch it, or you're just not aware that he might have watched it? I don't or? believe he has plans to watch it, no. Uh, can I just wait? Mm -hmm. The call was yesterday, right? Not this morning? Uh, uh, it was yesterday, yes. Yeah, sure. The call was yesterday. Uh, go ahead. Change the subject. Um, no. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Catherine. Sure. Um, in the interview, um, Mr. Snowden says that his um, disclosures have not caused any damage. Um, does this department agree with that assessment? Well, Secretary Kerry spoke to this yesterday w during an interview with NBC about his view that it has caused damage, and that's one of the reasons we're so concerned. And a range of administration officials have made that point as well. Um, there hasn't been, actually, been any proof that it's caused damage. It's easy for you to say it's caused damage, mm -hmm. but without actually providing proof that it has, how do we know that's correct? Well, because a countless number of uh, administration officials, some under oath during testimony, have stated that it has, uh, and they've uh, talked as extensively as they can. can you give a specific example, or even a broader example, of where it has compromised your counterterrorism operations, for example? Uh, I'm not going to lay out uh, specifics along those lines. A lot of those, obviously, 
uh, don't happen out of this building. Uh, if there are more to share, I'm sure we will. But again, there have been a range of testimony, interviews on this issue, and there's been broad agreement on that front. And is there any possibility that Mr. Slogan can be given some kind of amnesty or a clemency by the administration? Or again, is it your view that he absolutely has to go before a court? Uh, I refer you to the trial? Department of Justice. They have the lead on the legal procedures. Go ahead, Catherine. Um, you mentioned that there are specific procedures for raising issues when you have concerns. Um, Mr. Sm Snowden says he tried to go through proper channels and whistleblow, but was actually rebuffed. Um, if this is true, um, what does this say about the system for whistleblowers? Well, obviously, the DOJ and ODNI are the appropriate uh, venues for that question. I will say the NSA has responded to this question today. Uh, they explained that they have found one email inquiry by Edward Snowden into the Office of General Counsel asking for an explanation of some material that was in a training course he had just completed. Uh, the email did not raise allegations or concerns about wrongdoing or abuse, but posed a legal question about the office of that, uh, that the Office of General Counsel addressed. Uh, this was not, there was not additional follow-up note, uh, and I believe they plan to release that email later today. And, and one more, quickly. Um, to them, not their response to him. As I understand it, yes, but I refer to you, the, uh, okay. the you to you them just, on what they Sorry, Catherine, just what, but the, the, the legal question that he raised, was it, I think that this is, a whole thing is illegal and unconstitutional? I don't have any other details. Right. It and sounds like his characterization them. isn't uh, in line with what gotcha. uh, the email says. Uh, uh, no, oh, go ahead, more. Catherine. One more. Um, Mr. Snowden says he hasn't cooperated with Russia in any way and that when he transited through Russia or intended to transit through Russia, he didn't have um, said documents on his person or have access to them. Um, do you believe that to be factual, given what you know about the Russian services and government? Well, uh, I will just simply say that passports, uh, and I know that's what he was, I believe, referring to in the full context, are uh, property of uh, the Department of State and can be revoked by the department uh, or uh, on request from uh, from. Uh, the law enforcement agencies. Uh, that's standard operating procedure in cases like this, and, and that was done in this case. Uh, new topic? Um, yes, I'd like to ask about Sudan in this case of the um, mm -hmm. woman in jail um, for refusing to um, convert um, to Islam. Um, the, her husband, um, Daniel Wenny, did an interview in which he said that the State Department, um, he's furious with the State Department. He said that the State Department has not helped him, that told him that they would not help the family because this involved a, crim uh, a criminal case of a non-U.S. citizen. Is that true? Uh, well, let me first say, uh, as you all know, we still don't have a Privacy Act waiver in this case. Uh, we have raised um, this issue, and obviously that wouldn't be applicable to, um, to so Miriam uh, because she's not a U.S. Uh, citizen and there's no suspicion, suspicion she is. Um, uh, we have, uh, our consular services has uh, done everything uh, that they would in any normal case. I can't go into further detail beyond that. I will also add, and I know somebody asked this question the other day, at what level has this been raised? Um, uh, Under Secretary Sherman uh, called uh, in the charge of the Embassy of Sudan to discuss the case just last week. Uh, in addition to uh, her uh, meeting, Special Envoy Donald Booth this week spoke with the Sudanese foreign minister to convey our grave concerns about this case. Um, a, a, a special envoy booth also called upon the government of Sudan to respect the right to freedom of religion, including one's rights to change one's faith or beliefs. Um, we have U.S. Embassy officials have attended public hearings to date uh, and will closely monitor the appeals process in Khartoum, uh, which we understand can be quite lengthy. Well, what are the levers of pressure that the U.S. has here? I mean, the U.S. has given um, Sudan hundreds of millions of dollars over the last many years. Um, is there any consideration of withholding U.S. aid, considering um, all of your um, work on religious freedom and that the U.S. holds itself up as a moral authority on religious freedom? Well, it's not just the United States. Obviously, a range of countries have put a significant amount of public pressure on in this case. Uh, I'm not aware of uh, that option being considered, but we will consider continue to press through every channel we can our concerns about this case. Well, why not? I mean, do you think that the taxpayers would want their money being kind of subsidized for a government that is going to execute a woman for well, refusing to convert? Well, clearly, Elise, we're concerned about uh, this horrific case, and we've expressed that many, many, many times. 
there are a range of criteria that are looked at for any consideration on that level, and I'm not aware of that being under consideration. I understand, but on a general rule, I mean, in terms of your, um, you know, policies on religious freedom, what are the consequences for a, a country that has the death penalty for a violation of religion? Well, again, I don't want to speculate on that. You know how strongly we feel about religious freedom. We'll continue to well, press. We're seeing the process. I know that you say that you feel strongly about it, but I mean, what is the policy? I mean, are there sanctions that are applicable in terms of violation of human rights and specifically on the death penalty? Obviously, there are a range of criteria that are looked to in any uh, in any case, I have nothing further to speculate well, would on. Would you say point. that that's being considered, any type of punitive action? Not that I'm aware of, no. Jeff, but, do, you, do you actually, do you, do you have the aid figure? The aid do figure? Know I do the, not have that. I'm know, happy to, to get not, that to all of you. Do you know that if, if it is, in fact, hundreds of million dollars? I don't I mean, know. Sudan I don't is have still a state sponsor yeah, of terrorism. Yeah, last so year they spent about a hundred and something so million dollars. Mm -hmm. do, the act, the... Would you say, or can you say, if your efforts on behalf of this woman who is not an American citizen uh, is greater than it would be in a normal, in, in a case where, uh, I want to retract the word normal, in, in a case where it was a, a U.S. citizen, or are you doing the same greater thing you Greater than would do? for her? Well, she's married to an American citizen, right? Or has that not been established? Is that not applicable? We so, Does that not matter? Broadly speaking, and we can't, you know why we can't say, Are you doing it? the same thing that you, for her that you would do for a, you know, for, for someone who was a U.S. citizen, not just married to her? Obviously, the circumstances of this case have warranted a greater level of engagement, which right. we are doing in this case. Why? Okay. Because he's a citizen or because it's a, the death penalty and a violation of, of religious freedom? Uh, because... Look at uh, the the story we've all been talking about about what is happening with this woman and the violation of religious freedom, and that's something we broadly speak about across the world, and we're doing in this case for that reason. But in terms of your outreach to the Sudanese mm -hmm. authorities, are, is the State Department operating on the uh, not presumption, but on the uh, on the uh, are you operating as if she was an American citizen who you have a you know a, a more of an obligation to 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 uh, to defend? Uh, I wouldn't put it in those terms, but we're doing everything we can uh, to push for her release. But could, if she was an American citizen, could you do more? I mean, what I'm getting at is if, are there limits though, to what you can do because she is not an American citizen? Obviously, in this case, we're attending public hearings. Uh, that's something we would do for an, a U.S. citizen. I, I don't know what the other specifics would be, but we're doing everything we can possibly think of. Didn't she just have a baby as well? Mm -hmm. So the baby would be an American citizen. Uh, well, again, uh, as we've spoken to a little bit in here, we can't speak to the specifics of the case because we don't have a Privacy Act waiver. But I would say, broadly speaking, uh, there needs to be proof of that uh, genetic connection in order to have the rights of an American citizen for anyone. Has that proof been has that proof been authenticated? I don't. There are no more details I can provide on this case. We don't have a Privacy <coughs> Act waiver. I can waiver. say publicly that if you go ahead and excuse this woman, then our recourse of action will be one, two, three. Well, wouldn't I, that, wouldn't that I have appreciate like the more advice, Said. I think we're doing everything we can through the proper channels to make clear how strongly we but feel about this Such as what? I mean, you know, if there are incentives and disincentives. What I just outlined a range of the steps we're taking. Change of topic. Egypt. Uh, yep, go ahead. Yes, Egypt. What do you make of the uh, elections and the results we have so far as a semi um, formal? Well, we're waiting for the official results, uh, official announcement of the results, uh, which we often do and is pretty standard. Uh, as we said before, we don't want to get ahead of the process. Uh, we remain concerned uh, more broadly about their continued restrictive political environment leading up to the election and its implications for inclusivity and stability in Egypt, including politicized address, ad arrests and limits on freedom of the press. Uh, democracy is more than elections, uh, and we will continue to press for progress on all of those areas. They, they extended their uh, elections for one extra day. I mean, mm -hmm. how do you look at this? Because they uh, apparently they wanted to increase the turnout at the elections, which really was weak the first two days. Mm -hmm. I mean, is this normal thing to do? I, mean, I don't no. have any political analysis of, of, of their steps they've taken uh, in that regard. Specifically, our concerns remain the ones that I just would, outlined. Would that, would, you know, with this extension and so on, uh, sort of uh, how would you respond to that in terms of uh, when it comes time to saying this election was fine up to international standards and so on. Well, again, we'll wait, way, for, Saeed, we'll wait position. for, let me finish, we'll mm -hmm. wait for the results uh, to be officially announced and then mm -hmm. we'll have 
a comment on the results. But thus far, do you feel that uh, the elections were conducted, let's say, in a nonviolent atmosphere or no, no intimidation Again, atmosphere? Again, we'll, we'll, we'll wait to do analysis until the results are announced. And uh, as I mentioned, we still have remaining concerns about additional steps that need but to be the, taken. But the, the campaigns the have already talked about, you know, this one won with a 93 or 94 percent, and that I, one only I understand 4 percent, and, we've and seen the, the same fraud votes were... We've seen the same reports, uh, obviously, but we'll wait for the official and uh, results to be announced. It's a conceded defeat, yes, too. Yes, conceded. So, I mean... We'll wait for the official results sort of to be announced. still sticking your head in the sound? That CC's we'll look not going forward to, to talking thing. about that when the official are you, results are Are you are promising announced. that you will have an analysis for us once the, um, once the official results... I'm not making results. any promises, Well, you just I, said you would wait until... You said you would wait until the official results came out and, and before giving your analysis. Let me put it this way. We'll, so, we'll look I just, forward to a robust discussion in this very briefing room and I just want to uh, make, when there are official results announced. And I just want to make sure that I got this right. Uh, you're, you, you're not going to comment on things unrelated to the result, i.e., the conduct uh, of the election, until also until the mm -hmm. official and results. And obviously, are I, I also expressed concern uh, about some of the lead up to the elections, concerns we have about inclusivity, media freedoms, those remain. And we saw those leading up to the elections as well. Are you concerned about the low turnout, which was less than the uh, previous election for uh, when um, Morsi was elected? Well, without doing political analysis, I will say that, um, you know, our view is that uh, they also need to keep in mind, uh, the new officials, that uh, democracy is more than elections, and uh, there are a number of steps they need to, uh, they'll need to take. Uh, but if the turnout was only 47 percent, and given that he may have won by 96 percent, according to state television, but we'll go along with the game of waiting mm -hmm. for the official results. Then does that give him a credibility? Does that give him legitimacy as the leader of all of Egypt? We will wait until the official sure. results are announced. Sure. Yeah. During the, the Let's process. just do one at a time. Go ahead. Uh, what, ladies first, Saeed. Thank, Thank you. Go ahead. Thanks, Jen. Um, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Saeed. So during the, the election process, a lot of Egyptians were complaining that mm -hmm. uh, they were asked, they were told that if they do not end vote on the third day, uh, 500 Egyptian pounds will be taken out of their paychecks. I mean, and this is not only 10 or 50 Egyptians, this is what thousands of Egyptians are saying on Twitter, just, you know, put hashtag Egypt and, and you will see all this. What do you make of this? This is a way of intimidation because the turnouts, the first two days were apparently not more than 20%, the semi-official. You know, and then all of a sudden we're hearing numbers in 40s and 47 percent and all this. What do you make of all this? I mean, watching Broadly from a speaking, distance. we'd be concerned about any reports of intimidation, and we're certainly concerned about reports of, uh, of uh, lack of inclusivity, of uh, crackdown on media that has been ongoing. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to ask, uh, you know, just to follow up on... Specifically on this, there are countries in the world that you regard as democracies where voting is required and not voting is punishable by being fined. Mm -hmm. uh, I can think of a large one. It's an island. It's also a continent. Um, if you say you have concerns with this in Egypt, I just said broadly about? speaking, but we don't have any confirmation of that. I understand that there are uh, uh, reports out there on Twitter, but we'll wait until we have the final results. Go ahead. I ask about your relationship with Egypt. The fact that the president yesterday only mentioned Egypt in passing and really reduced the whole relationship to a security arrangement. Does that indicate that, you know, your relationship with Egypt at the present time, probably at its lowest point since the signing of the Camp David Accord? No, it does not. It was a 30-minute or 40-minute speech. It did not talk about every issue we work on in the world because it would have been five hours and uh, the West Point cadets may have been ready to celebrate their graduation at that point. So I wouldn't analyze how many lines or words as to meaning of the importance. Do you agree with the president hours? that, that uh, it is only a Three hours? Arrangement? No, no, I think it's a bit longer. Go ahead. Do you That's agree true. with the president that it is basically a security arrangement, nothing else? I think we've been pretty clear we have an extensive relationship. Uh, we want to work with Egypt over the long term. Go the, ahead. Well, well, hold on. Since you brought up the speech, mm -hmm. I just have one one, I think, just one question okay. about it, and that is, um, given the fact that the idea of this speech was for, for the president to lay out what his vision, foreign policy vision is for the next two years of, of his presidency, and given that this is the building that is in charge of doing most of the foreign policy, can you 
So is there anything that this building is going to, or the people in the, who work for this building are going to do any differently today than they would have before this speech was given? In other words, was there any, did the speech identify to people here, people in the foreign policy apparatus of the administration, any change in direction in any policy, or was it just an explanation of what has been happening and uh, it, what, what has been happening and that w what has been happening is going to continue to happen? Well, Matt, I'd hope not, given that we are, well, we're fully consulting on the content of the speech. And part of the speech was efforts that have been ongoing that are of vital importance to the United States and certainly priorities to the administration, Iran negotiations, for example. Um, but there was broad agreement, which was a central part of the speech, uh, about uh, addressing uh, terrorism and how we need to do that differently, given how, thre given how threats have changed, given in a post in a post Iraq and Afghanistan world, uh, that's been an ongoing discussion, and certainly that was a big uh, not just message from the speech, but that was a uh, a, a, a a path laid out uh, for moving forward. So, well, okay. So how is how is uh, you, uh, asking you to speak to this building, which is where your expertise is? How is the State Department's counterterrorism? operation or efforts going to change as a result of the new ideas or however you want to describe them that the president laid out yesterday? Well, in one way, we're going to work with the administration and with Congress uh, and with our international partners on determining the best way to uh, move forward with the Counterterrorism Partnership Fund that the president announced yesterday. Uh, how do we uh, use that to help address the threats we're facing around the world? So we'll certainly be well, an active partner in that. Right. That's my question, is what the one you just said. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? So how is it going to change? Well, how it How is it going to be? How, let me try, uh, try to be more specific. Okay, go ahead. How is it going to be any different than what you were doing on Monday? Well, again, Matt, a part of any announcement is a, part, is a result of an ongoing discussion internally about what's needed. So there's more work that needs to be done to determine how this would be spent and where and what the best way to do it. And obviously, it needs to go through Congress. Um, but that's a, an, an item we're working on. Well, okay, but leaving Congress aside, okay. the executive branch runs the foreign policy with the advice and the consent of, the, of, yes, of, correct. of, of Congress. What is the administration and writ large, but specifically the State Department, which runs foreign policy, foreign policy or which which carries out foreign policy on behalf of the president what are what are you what are you doing going to do differently now or in the next 2 years than you haven't been doing now i mean than you haven't been doing already i'm not sure one that that was the question that the speech was attempting to address um, obviously that the change in counterterrorism approach was part of it Another piece that the speech touched on was boosting support for the moderate opposition in Syria and what we're going to do more on that front. So that's another piece well, that we will certainly say, continue to work on. He did he talk about it. He said maybe like one sentence about boosting the opposition, but he didn't talk about how he was going to do that. Maybe you could do that. Well, one of the areas, ways, and he did talk about it in the speech. That was one of the things that he uh, glossed over it. It was an important component of the speech. I'm giving you some insight here in terms of what it was telling you about what our path is moving forward, Elise, is that that is a priority to the president. It's a priority to the secretary. Um, as uh, we talked about, well, uh, in a range of briefings and, and uh, folks who were on TV, including uh, National Security Advisor Rice, said yesterday uh, there is some attractive uh, language uh, that we are going to work with Congress on. I know this is a reference to Congress, but it's relevant. Uh, that's in the... Uh, NDAA uh, approved by the Senate Armed Services Committee uh, that would authorize the Secretary of Defense to provide equipment and training to vetted members of the Syrian opposition. Uh, that's obviously a uh, step that we will work with them and our international partners on. So that's one component certainly we will be involved in. But, the, 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 but the, the, this, I guess the point is that, I mean, this, this speech, one of the reasons the speech was given, I think, and I, I know this is a question better addressed to the White House, but I think that it's accepted among everyone in, across the administration, was that the president has been criticized for having an uncertain or unclear, right? I mean, he has been. You can't deny that he hasn't been criticized, right? Uh, whether, you think the, whether you think the criticism is valid or not, he has been criticized. And this, was, this speech was supposed to address that. I'm just, and presumably, in doing that, in addressing the criticism, 
you point out, you clarify, you define what your vision, what your, your, what your goal for the rest of your presidency is. And so I think that you agree that he did that in the speech. Is that not right? I do, but... So how, has the, how will the State Department, acting on this new directive uh, from the president to fulfill his foreign policy vision over the next two years, how will you be doing any, uh, things differently because the, what you have been doing has been has been criticized. Whether or not the criticism is valid or not, it has been criticized. New policy. He was just explaining Think? his existing one. Okay. Correct. But All right. Also, so you won't he, be doing so, anything so this different. was an explanation. So so that's not what you no, said. No, no, no. Let me continue. No, no, no. Time. It is what I said. He was laying out where we've come from and what we've done and where we're going to go moving forward. But where there are, we're, let me finish. There are several components of that that are ongoing. Whether that's Iran, whether that's uh, you know, leading off of the uh, successful elections in Ukraine. Uh, but there are areas, like addressing counterterrorism, that we are going to uh, take a new approach to. But so my question is, no. how is where we're going now, at post-speech, different from where we were going a week ago? Well, we've been a post-Iraq and almost post-Afghanistan uh, engagement world, almost, for some time. So there have been discussions about the best way to uh, approach uh, the threats of terrorism, and that was part of what was reflected in the speech. That's part of what we'll be working on. Obviously, the threats from Syria are a part of that, and that will be another area that the Secretary will continue to play a prominent role in the administration. But, but those are ongoing discussions. They not they they, they didn't get there, there's no shift at the moment. There isn't anything. This building isn't doing anything differently today than it was doing on Monday. Well, Does we're it? working actively now on moving these agenda items forward. So we're continuing Speaking to do that. Syria, the <coughs> um, there have been reports, um, I think corroborated by some officials around town, that um, there is an American suicide bomber in uh, Syria. Could you tell us what you know about that? Uh, we are, of course, looking into those reports, uh, but cannot confirm anything at this time. Jim, Back to the speech real quick. Mm -hmm. um, Two points the president made. No, I want to. Oh, um, okay, go ahead, Ellie. But so is he? Do you cannot confirm that he's American, or he's he believed to be American? Well, I think the reports have said they're believed to be, but we don't have any additional confirmation to offer at this time. On, on the issue of the chemical weapons, did you say at the top that Mr. Kerry uh, expressed concern to Lavrov that eight percent remain? Yes. Okay, so the reports that indicate that they are actually moving and the Syrians are meeting their obligations are not true? Well, there have been steps that have been taken to contain the materials. They need to be moved. Uh, obviously, that's what the next step is, and that's what they discussed on the And phone. I just wanted you to clarify you said, uh, something about the, the, the phone call mm -hmm. uh, at the very top. That uh, uh, Did I hear you correctly? You said that he, he uh, expressed his concern that Shishin... Uh, Fighters are going to to Ukraine or to Syria. Ukraine, Ukraine. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, well, so the Russians are aiding Shishin fighters to go to Ukraine. Is well, that, he is expressed that the suggestion? concern about what we've uh, seen along those lines. There have been a range of reports, so that's what he was expressing concern about. Just going back Can, to this uh, speech real quick. Uh, um, Can we finish that and then we'll okay. go, go ahead? Yeah, well, no, I just want to go back to the Syria Elise's question. Okay. You said, sorry, just about this alleged American guy. Mm -hmm. You don't. One, you, you can't confirm that he's American, and two, you can't confirm that the person who is pictured in this was involved in any kind of a, a attack or suicide bombing? Is that, is that correct? Is that I correct? don't have any other details to confirm. The Go president ahead. in the speech yesterday <clears throat> cited two examples of American leadership and strength, two of them being Ukraine and Iran. Isn't it a little early to be talking about that? Uh, I, I would argue the president doesn't give himself enough credit for what he's done around the world, and that's how the secretary feels, too. We would not be uh, engaged in comprehensive negotiations with Iran, which is where the program is uh, stalled and is uh, rolling back, if it were not for uh, the role of the United States, along with the P5 plus 1 partner, certainly. Uh, Ukraine, uh, we've been uh, engaged more or as much as any other country in the world in uh, supporting the elections process and supporting the uh, government and supporting their efforts moving forward. Yes, there's more work that needs to be done. The point is we need to continue to uh, to stay at it. But isn't this a potential mission accomplished situation? Absolutely not. Yeah. You, you would argue the president doesn't give himself enough credit? How much credit would you give him? 
Well, I think what I'm, I would give him more than he has given well, himself. Like That's what I just said. Credit. So would the secretary. <laughs> for, <laughs> and for, and for, for, for what? For what? Yes, exactly. That's no, for, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't mean for, like he for doesn't the Iran deserve credit. For I don't, the, I mean, I mean, I'm talking, what specifically you're talking he doesn't get enough credit for. That's uh, what I'm saying. For engagement in issues like Iran, what we've done on Ukraine, uh, efforts to dive in and engage around the world. Russia has still annexed Crimea. I mean, Iran, there's ongoing negotiations, but is that the successor that you're talking? We're talking about engagement in the world and taking on tough issues that present themselves, and the United States continues to play a prominent role doing that. Two points that you made, one of which mm -hmm. was you said that there was going to be a new approach on counterterrorism. Well, what I'm talking about is the Counterterrorism Partnership Fund that was announced in right. the President's speech yesterday. Right. And his speech where he outlined uh, that uh, the, the threats we're facing are different than they were in a Iraq and a pre-Iraq and a pre-Afghanistan period where we were focusing on decimating uh, core al-Qaeda. We know that these threats are scattered uh, and we need to adjust our approach accordingly. Right. But can you tell us how? I mean... That's what we are going to continue so, to work through. But the uh, fund, as Matt was, Matt was saying, <laughs> these are not things that have already happened. These are things you're now working out. He announced, obviously, we've That's taken a, fund, a range yeah. of steps to address over the course of the last months and years. But uh, again, this fund is ju was just announced yesterday. We need to work through Congress. We need to work with our international partners, and we will be focused on so that. So can we expect at some point in the coming months you will then roll this out for us so we actually have I'm sure some concrete details. I'm sure there will be more to share about where the funding would go and how it would be used. Uh, there's a great deal of flexibility which we see as a benefit and I'm sure there will be more to say uh, in the coming months. Okay, just to pick up on one other mm -hmm. thing you mentioned. You said that you're going to be working on Syria and helping the moderate opposition. You said there was some attractive language mm -hmm. in the um, bill or the draft bill in, in front of Congress. Could you point us to the attractive language? Sure. Uh, what I was referring to is there's language that Senator uh, Levin offered to the NDAA. Um, uh, that uh, language, a provision in the N NDAA, uh, which are, has already been approved by the Senate Armed Services Committee, would authorize the Secretary of Defense to provide equipment and training to vetted members of the Syrian opposition. And we look forward to continuing to work with Congress on that list. Okay, so you're talking about, are you now getting into details about talking about specific equipment with Congress? Well, again, you need to have authorization in order to mm -hmm. train and equip. Uh, this would uh, provide that authorization. That's what we're working them, with them on. About this fund, the, the procedure about this fund that you mentioned. So you said that you're talking with the partners on this fund. Mm -hmm. Who will be in charge for the allocations of this fund? The Pentagon, DOD, um, or the State it's Department, or there will be another body? A, a Pen the Pentagon will, would be in charge, but obviously the State Department would work with them. Uh, the White House it's an in, would be an interagency process, as so, I understand it. So what kind of draft that you are working on for the approval in the Congress? Are you going to, for, for example, represent the, the breakdown of this fund within the partners, or what, what, what kind of details are we It's expecting? only 24 hours old, so we'll continue the discussions and consultations, and as more information is available, we will make that available <coughs> Jen, to you. Jen, on the bill, you and officials speaking on background yesterday quite, quite a bit about this about the attractive language that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. This is in the defense author, uh, uh, authorization bill, which could take months to get through. Uh, would the administration or would the State Department be in favor of perhaps taking Senator Levin's language out of that bill and making it a standalone item mm -hmm. that could potentially get through uh, the legislative process quick, more quickly? It is a good question. Obviously, we're discussing a range of mechanisms with Congress. Um, I don't want to speculate on those publicly, um, but I'm happy to check with our Hill team and see if there's more we okay. want to say on that and front. Is it correct that train and equip programs like the one being considered require congressional authorization? Well, uh, this type of a program uh, where this is provided uh, would require, yes. It, it, so, you there, so you said that there's attractive language that you look forward to working with Congress. I mean, you could have proposed this language to Congress at any point. You could have said, we want to train and equip to Congress. Can you give us the authorization to do that? I mean, it seems now like Congress is giving you the push to do it. I think there have been discussions uh, in the administration for months, as you know, about uh, a range of options and mechanisms to support. Um, 
This president's speech was a reflection of that yesterday. Support for this language is a reflection of that. I would remind you that we have ongoing discussions with Congress all the time. So, can, can I ask if I'm wrong? Um, it was briefly mentioned in the speech. Drafting was uh, scheduled to begin this month. It's now the end of May. Uh, clearly, we're somewhat behind schedule. I'm sure you agree with that characterization. When is uh, drafting set to actually begin? And do you have enough time given the deadline is July 20th? Well, we're continuing to target uh, July 20th and working towards that goal. Uh, nothing has changed on that front. Um, our team uh, will have another round of meetings uh, coming up in a couple of weeks, um, so I don't have anything new to update you on. No concern over the fact that you had said that May was the month that you would begin drafting and drafting I think we did done. extensive briefings around the last uh, round of negotiations where we made clear that gaps remained and uh, this is challenging, uh, but we will uh, keep at it. Just one, just one more, actually, looping back on the actual speech. Mm -hmm. uh, the President said that multilateralism, that international institutions enforce international norms when it comes to Ukraine, when it comes to Iran, when it comes to Syria. He also said he acknowledged that these institutions have infrastructural problems. He didn't specifically say that NATO is in crisis. He didn't specifically say that the UN Security Council has problems. But he did acknowledge that, and then he didn't propose any fixes to these institutions. Does the S State Department plan on proposing any any I, solutions? I have no new problems? proposals to offer for you today. Obviously, okay. we've expressed frustrations uh, consistently over uh, a range of issues, including uh, you know the blocking of uh, Syria, uh, Syria uh, security resolution, uh, Syria resolutions in the Security Council. So that's uh, consistent with those frustrations. But I don't have anything new to one offer more, on that today. Yeah, oh, just okay. Changing of the view. Go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. It's okay. okay yeah, finish yeah, with uh, only because um, you know if, if the message. <laughs> you scared the you scared the the uh, young men in the third row there. Go ahead. If, if the message of the speech was to, to lay out this broader vision, and the broader vision was multilateralism and that these institutions are a force multiplier for American power, um, and then he says that these institutions have problems and then lays out no, no fixes whatsoever, what is the vision there? Well, again, I think acknowledging that it's, uh, it, there have been challenges, but they have still been a, uh, a force that has been effective. I mean, look at what's what NATO has done around Ukraine and boosting, uh, you know, countries in the Eastern Bloc. That that has been an, a very effective step that they have taken. Um, you know, this is, uh, what, but the speech was not meant to, as I as I mentioned, be uh, a raising every question we have in the world and providing every answer. Uh, you could have uh, had a speech. That I will make it now 72 hours if you were doing that uh, piece. So. We'll continue these discussions. As the President mentioned, Secretary Hagel uh, and uh, Secretary Kerry, uh, NSA and National Security Advisor Rice will all be giving speeches to follow up on the speech. There will be more that we'll continue to talk about on the issues he talked about yesterday. Um, just Go one ahead. quick one on Iran. Um, there's a new report coming out that just came out that um, looks at Iranian um, cyber hackers. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you have anything at that. It said that it um, targeted um, foreign policy officials. I'm wondering if you have been notified that anybody in the State Department has been um, targeted by this scheme? Um, I don't have that level of detail. I'm happy to check, Elise. I can say that uh, the use of fake personas for malicious purposes is well known uh, to the United States government. We are aware that hackers in Iran and elsewhere often use social media to gain information or make connections with targets of interest, including U.S. government and private entities. Uh, to defend against these threats, the U United States is committed to helping the public and private sector protect itself in cyberspace by sharing actionable information. Uh, and as a part of that, on a daily basis, the FBI and DHS notify individual victims or potential victims of specific cyber threats uh, and incidents that affect them. Uh, this report did not seek 
uh, U.S. government analytical or technical support uh, in developing uh, their conclusions. Uh, they were independently developed, uh, but obviously, as I noted, we've had concerns about this issue and have been taking steps to are address. You, are you aware specifically of this particular scheme um, where these fake journalists tried to target um, U.S., Israeli, British officials? I mean, when you talk about Iranian hackers and social media, are you saying that you have actual knowledge of this particular campaign? Uh, I don't have that level of detail. Again, I'm happy to check. I mean, we are certainly aware of the use of fake personas in a range of manners uh, to uh, try to access the type, this type of information. But uh, I can check and see if there's more we can offer on this. Uh, I believe you did. Do you have the answer to the oil question that I asked the other day? Or maybe it's not in your book in front of you. Uh, well, we are aware uh, of press reports uh, that uh, Iran's crude oil exports have at times exceeded the target, uh, but there's a range of data that's looked at. Um, we would uh, disagree with the findings of, that you referenced that suggested it's mathematically impossible. We disagree with that. Uh, we'll continue to track uh, as we have been uh, for the upcoming months. Mathematically impossible for the average to go below mm -hmm. what, it, what, yes. what, what it was set out in the um, joint agreement. Is that correct? Yeah, our view is it's way too early to make that. Wait, wait, you comment on the IAEA uh, I don't. I mean, I, don't, I know that the issue was raised by Matt last week, last Friday, but after that, hence, have you commented uh, on that? Report? I don't think we've offered an additional comment. Okay. Uh, should we do a new topic, uh, Nicholas, and then yeah. we'll go to Scott in the back? Go yes. Ahead. Can we move to Southeast Asia? Sure. Thailand. Um, two days ago, after Matt's question, uh, you said that you continue to be deeply concerned about the situation in Thailand. Mm -hmm. uh, your friend, the uh, European Union, said this morning that they are extremely concerned, uh, but uh, the Thai military doesn't seem to listen to all of you. So wh what is the U.S. leverage on the Thai military? Do you have conversation with the new regime, even with the royal palace, and uh, are sanctions uh, one of the options the U.S. could consider? Uh, I don't want to outline anything being considered. I'm not announcing we're being considering that either. I, I can check and see if there's more to say on that front. But our steps we've taken, as you know, uh, are to uh, take steps to suspend assistance. We have been in touch uh, with the military, as we've consistently been uh, throughout the process. We continue to call uh, for elections. Uh, we don't believe there is a legitimate reason to delay uh, elections, um, and we uh, will continue to work with our international partners to use every uh, political lever, uh, economic lever, where where uh, applicable, uh, to uh, put the necessary pressure on. Can I follow up on that? Sure. Um, today, Thai military officials said that, or they hinted that it would be a while before they they schedule elections. Do you have any response to those particular? I do. Uh, we don't believe uh, there is a legitimate reason to delay. Uh, we believe, uh, and so we would urge the military council to facilitate an inclusive and transparent electoral process, uh, and we encourage them to do that soon. So earlier you said that, uh, d you know, democracy is not only about elections, but would you say that currently the conditions are right for Thailand to have an election uh, as soon as it can feasibly take place? We would, but I, I would also say the meaning of that is not what you think it is. The meaning of that is media freedoms, which we've also expressed concerns about in Thailand. It's inclusivity. Every country is different. But um, but that was the broad meaning. Scott, go ahead. Venezuela. Mm -hmm. uh, the Venezuelan government says the U.S. envoy to Colombia, Kevin Whitaker, is helping the opposition leader, Maria Corina Machado, plan a series of coup plots. Is that true? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, let's be clear. Uh, these allegations are absolutely false and baseless. Uh, we've seen many times the Venezuelan government uh, try to distract from its own actions by blaming the United States or other members of the international community for events inside Venezuela. The real issues are ones that must be, subject, uh, must be the subject of serious, inclusive dialogue among Venezuelans uh, with actions to address the legitimate grievances of the Venezuelan people. Can I go back to Ukraine? Yes. Just for a second. Mm -hmm. President-elect has called for direct U.S. military assistance. Is that something the Obama administration is considering? Uh, again, uh, this president has uh, approved three tranches of assistance. Uh, we'll continue to uh, uh, review uh, their requests, uh, but uh, nothing has changed in our view of lethal assistance. So, on Ukraine, um, do you have any comment or concern about the situation in the East right now at the, in the wake of this helicopter being downed uh, and 
these photographs that appear to show innocent, like, civilians, including children, lying dead in the streets. Are, the other day you said that you didn't have any particular concerns about the Ukrainian authorities' use of force, but you did have concerns about the separatists um, and you were urging the Russians to rein them in. Do you now, do you have concerns about the Ukrainian authority, the, about the use of the the use of force by the Ukrainian authorities, or is it still the, are you still the same, in the same spot? Nothing has changed. Our, our broad view, as you know, is that uh, de-escalation is the proper path forward, but many challenges remain on the ground. Uh, there's no question about that. Uh, as you noted, uh, today heavily armed separatists in Slovyansk shot down a military transport helicopter, killing 14 people. Uh, four OSCE observers that were abducted on May 26th uh, have uh, are continue to be uh, held. Um, separatists, reportedly including many from Russia, attempted to seize the airport in Donetsk on Monday. So there are obviously a range of uh, recent events in isolated areas that we remain concerned about, and um, challenges remain. But you still believe that the Ukrainian authorities are acting within their – they're acting appropriately and within, within their right to maintain order in these clashes that are going on in the, in the East. We still believe Ukrainian authorities have the right to uphold law and order in their own country. And you yeah. don't believe that they're using disproportionate force or attacking civilians? Uh, that is not a concern I'm aware of. Um, Jim, the, um, the, mm -hmm. Yes, still in okay. Ukraine. Um, I think the Ukrainian authorities have announced that the inauguration for Poroshenko is going to be on uh, June 7th. Mm -hmm. Do you have any um, indication as to whom might represent the United States at that? Not at this point. We do plan to be represented, uh, but I don't have any announcements to make. And you wouldn't, would you? Hmm? Wouldn't the White House make that announcement? You're, you're so uh, tied up with protocol, Matt. That yes. is true. Exactly. Um, uh, uh, speaking, speaking of protocol, though, yeah. on Ukraine, um, a couple of Russian publications, but also the Washington Post, have put have published uh, uh, cables that were released, uh, by, that came out from WikiLeaks about U.S. diplomats' rather unfavorable view of the president-elect back when he was, uh, before he was the foreign minister. Um, do you know if those, if, uh, if the concerns expressed by people like Ambassador Herbst um, about Mr. Poloshenko still exist? I have not heard uh, those concerns expressed, uh, nor have I discussed those cables with uh, people currently in the administration. On Ukraine. Yes. Do you believe whatever the, the Ukrainian government strategy is, is working? I, I was there, I just came back, I saw how Crimea was, I was there for two months, I saw how was, Crimea was taken away and the world was watching. And I saw how the East, people in the East, um, um, uh, wanted to vote. A lot of people in Eastern Ukraine wanted to vote and they couldn't. I was in Slavyansk and I, I saw how the army um, was suffering trying to get back that city, but apparently they had no good strategy because they were bombing checkpoints and going with instead of seizing them so the separatists would, would come back. There was a lot of chaos there on the ground um, among people, and it's been going on for a long time, and it seems like the more it goes on, the worse it gets, and it, the, the more likely it is like a, a civil war instead of just, you know, Whatever you can't you have think. a civil war when uh, it's Ukrainians uh, supporting Ukraine and you have Russian separatists from the outside uh, coming in and wreaking havoc in some parts of but Eastern Ukraine. But they're using the insiders, the separatists that are Ukrainian separatists. You, you know, they don't. I think there's some argument about that. As a human question. Uh, I, our view here is that there was a successful election uh, with a high turnout. Uh, there were certainly some in the challenges. West, not in the East. <laughs> there were some challenges. Uh, there was even in some areas uh, where Russian separatists were attempting to prevent people from voting, they still voted. Uh, but across the country, 60 percent, uh, that was our 60 percent turnout, which is a high level of turnout. Uh, where we are now is we're focused on moving forward. And President elect Poroshenko has uh, announced that his number one priority will be re to restore order in eastern Ukraine. Uh, by increasing dialogues with citizens of the region. He's going to be traveling to the area soon after the inauguration, uh, and we're hopeful that that will be, uh, lead to a positive path forward. Uh, this is a Middle East piece. Hold on. Go ahead. Just a, your view is that everyone, that, that all Ukrainians in, the in, 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 all of, in all of Ukraine, excluding Crimea, are for 
the president elect and that anyone who is opposed and is conducting no, and is, doing may is that is not at all what I was is, suggesting. But you, you I, seem to be suggesting that all the separatists are actually Russian and not Ukrainians. That's well, what I thought I heard, and please correct me if I'm wrong. I think the Russian separatists, um, Russian supported separatists, however you want to refer it to it, um, are. I wasn't suggesting that. I don't think we okay. know uh, the origin of a lot of these individuals. We've seen people cross borders. Uh, there's a lot of questions that have been raised. So, okay, so is it correct then that you are concerned that people from outside Ukraine, people who are not Ukrainian citizens, are going into Ukraine and fighting on the separatist side? Is that well, correct? Well, look at the, Chech the reports of Chechens coming yeah, across the border. That's what I, I just to. want to yeah, make sure. I was sure, I absolutely. Yes. Um, just, uh, well, do, we, just, do we have any more on Ukraine just before? Ukraine? Ukraine. 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 Okay, go yeah, ahead. Just a brief question. Uh, this is probably for the White House, but I'm here. <laughs> Not there, but um, apparently the president sent a letter to Abbas, um, uh, according to Palestinian media, um, Committing, recommitting the U.S. to the establishment of a Palestinian state, thanking him for his visit and uh, and for the, the gifts and, and the like. Do you know if there was a similar letter sent to Netanyahu? Uh, I would point you to the to White, White House, House on that. Sorry about that. Don't worry. I just have time for a few more here. So the Solomon Lee's piece. Um, apparently, um, the Palestinian, the next Palestinian Prime Minister, Ramdi Hamdallah, who will be the head of this technocratic government, the Palestinian technocratic technocratic government has been invited to come to Washington um, next month. Um, is that something that you're aware of? Is that something you can confirm? I'm not aware of that. Uh, obviously, we'll make decisions, broadly speaking, when we see uh, the final formation of the interim government. Uh, that hasn't been officially announced in any capacity, but I'm happy to check and see if that individual has been invited. Have, uh, have you gotten an update from the Israelis on their investigation into the uh, into the deaths of these two Palestinian teenagers. I have not received an update, no. Well, not, I mean, not you personally. We, we collected you, you, we. You have not. Do you know if this has been raised again with the Israelis? Uh, it's in, been in raised. I'm not aware of it being raised again this week, no. All right. Does it remain a concern that disproportionate? Cer certainly, certainly. Disproportionate for use of force may have been used? The same concerns we had last week. Okay. But it's up to them to determine. The okay. The Turkish court decided to uh, request the red notice for, for former Israeli commanders who were in charge uh, in the Mar in Mavi Marmara raid in 2010. And Israel immediately appealed it, but, and also the Israeli defense minister said that it was a political decision rather than a legal one. What, uh, what is the comment on, on this decision and how this verdict will impact the rapprochement between Turkey and Israel? I'm happy to check. I don't have any details on that specific uh, court finding. Japan. Okay, let's just do a couple. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Japan and North Korea has reached an agree agreement that uh, North Korea accepted to reopen the investigation into the fate of Japanese citizens uh, it kidnapped uh, a couple of decades ago. And Japan also agreed to ease some sanctions. Uh, first of all, uh, you have some comment on this. Well, uh, we would refer you to the government of Japan for more information on the announcement uh, that North Korea will reopen the investigation of all missing Japanese uh, citizens. We continue to support so, uh, Japanese efforts to resolve the abductions issue in a transparent mon uh, manner. And of course, we're closely co uh, coordinating with our allies and partners, including Japan, uh, on a range of issues. Uh, so we'll remain in touch with them. Uh, do you, uh, what do you think of the ease of it's particularly the sanction, is of sanction, uh, as one of the partner of the six party talk. Uh, I don't have any other particular comment on it. Uh, Mexico, Mexico, real quick. Oh, oh, go ahead. Did you get any from Japanese government in advance about this agreement? Uh, we were notified in advance and we remain in regular contact with the corner. Sure. It doesn't concern you that. Um, the Japanese are willing to ease sanctions against North Korea, considering that you are trying to maintain a sanctions regime on North, North Korea? Well, again, I don't have any confirmation of those plans. Uh, we were alerted that they are planning to engage in these discussions, or the discussion was offered, but I'll check and see if there's more we would like to add on that front. Could on Mexico, real quick. I think you can do three more. Go ahead. Sanctions mm -hmm. question. The House Foreign Affairs Committee today um, passed a resolution that would strengthen those questions by, among other things, mandating that the President uh, designate officials once they've been found to, to be in violation. Is the State Department supportive, supportive of this uh, initiative? 
Yes, I don't have any particular comment on legislation going through Congress. On um, that sure. Go Does the State Department have an update on Sergeant Tamarisi being held in New Mexico? Uh, <laughs> well, a consular officer attended um, his hearing uh, just yesterday. Uh, the uh, proceedings were postponed as he requested a change in legal representation. Uh, we don't have any uh, additional information at this point regarding the further scheduling of the legal proceedings. Obviously, that's something that would be determined on the ground. If Mexico is such a close ally of the United States, why has it taken two months to, to spring this guy? Well, again, we raise these issues, as you know. We uh, have been very clear about our uh, concerns. I don't think we've made uh, any secret of them, and we've made every consular uh, tool available uh, to him. Uh, beyond that, I don't have any speculation on the, the length of time for legal proceedings, which can take some time depending on the country. So the onus is on the Mexican government? Well, certainly they would be uh, the ones overseeing any legal process, uh, but we're going to be uh, available and attending the proceedings uh, moving forward. Uh, let's see, last one, anyone? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, actually, I actually I asked you about this on Monday, I believe, on that Monday, but uh, Tuesday, um, about the encounter between the Japanese and the Chinese fighter jets, and I just wanted to give you a chance to elaborate on your comments from earlier this week. Um, could you make a comment about the territoriality of the water they were in? Was it international waters or? Just I don't. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. I don't yeah. think I have anything to add to what I said um, the other day. Um, you know where we stand uh, on uh, territorial, these territorial issues, and uh, where we don't take positions. So I don't know that I have anything to add to the other day. Okay. Well, what, what, yesterday there was another speech by the vice president out in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Have you heard anything about what he said there? I, I do closely watch the vice president's speaking. One of the things that he okay. said was that he, he challenged his audience to name one innovation produced by China, suggesting that the Chinese are not an innovative country, that they don't, um, they don't produce anything that's revolutionary or that would – so I'm, I'm just wondering if people in the State Department think that this is uh, an appropriate description of China, which is, after all, the – inventor of quite a few things. Matt, I'm happy powder, to go press, take a look at the, the full compass. context of, of, of uh You haven't heard comments. any complaints from the Chinese about this? Not that I'm aware no? of. And I will say the Vice President has a great deal of pride in American innovation, so perhaps that's what he was speaking to. Uh, I, okay, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. That's a question which I asked. Okay. Uh, the Chinese assistance of Nikkei newspaper has detained two, two weeks ago. Uh, it's about, yeah, she tried to have a contact with Puji, Puji, uh, Puji Chang. Uh, is that that? Oh, yeah. Did you, have, did you ask some? I don't uh, have anything oh, yeah. new to add. Oh. Thanks, everyone.